Hey, and welcome back to Notion for Teachers. I'm Andrew, and it's my mission to support you in building and maintaining a Notion system to take the pain out of the admin of teaching, giving you back more of your time, whilst also improving the quality of the education that you're able to deliver to your students. So it's great to have you along. And what I'd like to show you today is um, how I organize my resources using Notion. For a very, very long time, while I was teaching. I was uh, on Twitter or speaking to other teachers and they would be telling me that here's this great resource that I have for teaching, I don't know, inequalities, for example. I was a maths teacher teaching inequalities, but it applies to any subject and topic. Um, and I'd be thinking, that's great. That's really, really great. I could now go sit there and create however many folders for all the different topics I'm gonna be teaching. I could file that resource in there. And then what I'd need to do is, I'd need to remember that when I come up to teach inequalities, for example, I'd need to remember to go back into that folder and pull out that resource. Which by that stage, well, I've lost any context or any sort of, uh, any, any of the information around it, which was kind of supporting why that particular teacher thought it was worth recommending that resource, or why I'd seen it on t Twitter and thought, ah, oh, looks like a great resource for teaching that particular topic. So I had this issue where resources became, just became titles in a folder in, in my computer and I didn't, and I'd lost the, the visibility of well, what, what that resource actually looked like. Um, and what does that resource, why, why is that resource going to be suitable for like year nine as opposed to year 11, for example. It's very, yes, I could come up with this very, very detailed folder system. But folder systems to me lose a lot of the, the value because you get way down these rabbit holes, rabbit worms of, of subfolders upon subfolders upon subfolders. What I really, really love about my Notion system is that I have a, I've got it set up now that I've got a view, an actual image representing every single one of those resources so that I can view all those images and rather than search for the particular name and I can search using Notion but I can just look at a page and I can see all the resources on the same page as thumbnails and just look along and see oh, right, there's the one that's the one that I'm thinking I had that picture in my head of that particular resource uh, there it is I can grab it straight away and I can link that to the topic that I'm going to be teaching and in, therefore into the lesson I'm going to show you how you do all that in this video series but today I just want to show you a high level what that resources bank looks like in Notion. Okay, so here we are looking at the resources database then. And as you can see, each of these are a separate resource, which um, where I'm able to display an image, representative image, which I selected and uploaded into Notion to represent that resource. I think this is so powerful because so often I'll be thinking to myself, oh, what was that resource that I had for surface area cylinder? I know what it looks like, but I just can't remember where I've saved it or what I've called it. And here I can, I can scroll down here and I can look at, oh yes, that's it. It was this one. And I've got a, a representative image there um, of that resource. Other options for finding that resource then, we've got our um, search function. Okay, and there's a couple of resources where the word cylinder features somewhere in the details of that resource. So that just very quickly pulls up. So I can quickly pull up everything I've got for quadratics or inequalities. Okay, and this is a work in progress for me. I'm still developing this, but you can see there that there are lots and lots of resources which I have um, and at the moment I'm viewing everything I've got a filter on this which shows me everything just for GCSE I can remove that filter and I'll see more then so if I now search for quadratics there's a few more resources in there because some of them are very specifically optimized for a level which is why there'll be a few more displaying now so just switching across to the default view then this is maybe where I would more likely be to enter my different options. So if I create a new uh, new resource, find this new resource online, and typically 
if I'm entering anything for AJA rating, that'll be like to say it's a five star resource, well worth remembering and being able to highlight that quickly. When I want to attach my image, I'll just upload an image file. Very often now I'm also uploading the actual Word document or PDF of the resource in there. Um, I'll, if it's a link, I'll include the link here. Uh, strand, I'm thinking whether that's whether that pure stats mechanics and so on. I also keep my CCF combined cadet force resources in here, hence why that's an option. Type lots of different types of resources that we could have, and you may choose um, types which better suit your needs. These are kind of this list has grown over time and really could maybe do with being optimized down to fewer options that is what it is right now. Then we have year groups. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, four, more, second, upper sixth. Topic. So these are just tight topics. As I come into that topic and find a resource for it, I create the option here. Maybe histograms, I don't know. Then histograms would display there. A little option for me, um, mainly suitable for lower ability groups. I don't know, whatever works best, whatever you need. Um, and here, this is a reference to my uh, topics database, different database with all the topics listed. And here I may say, well, this, this is a histogram resource which I've linked in here. Then it's obviously going to link to the histograms topic. What we'll then see is that when we go into that histograms topic, it will show us other information according to the properties that we have in our topics database and not all of which are populated. And the histograms is part of the statistical measures, higher level um, topic, suitable that the histograms topic is taught at fourth form in my school. And then the other resources that I have for histograms are here in these subtopic resources. If we just go back to our new resource, so we've highlighted it at the high level that's suitable for histograms um, subtopic or histograms topic. So there you can just show you how I've linked that or how I've set up the database and the different properties in the database. We've got a look at the search function. Uh, one thing I would like to show you is how I then have a view of this database in my lesson planning database. So here we have it in the lesson planning database, right? And if I am teach, if I'm preparing lessons for fourth form, as I was today, there is all the lessons I'm gonna teach the fourth form. I'm getting better at populating my subtopic, my schema work topic and the subtopics. I'm selecting my resources to suit the subtopic that I'm teaching that day. And then what I have on display at the bottom of that table is the resources that are suitable for GCSE. So I can then, if I'm looking for something to teach, to use to teach fourth form, I can come down here, find a resource, which I maybe remember, you know, cuboid volumes, nice little task there. I can come down, find that resource and um, suitably populate it up in the lesson planning dashboard, which is actually the dashboard that I then use on a day-to-day -day basis with each of the classes. So that is my oversight of the resources database. I'll just go back into that database there, give you a final view of what we've got in there. Lots of different um, properties against each resource, allowing us to then create filters with which allow us to very, very quickly pull up what we want. We want everything that's suitable for stats. And there's all my resources for teaching stats I have so far. Okay. Just as a demonstration of the, um, the way that we can use those filters to pull up different groups of resources. So I hope that's useful. Okay, so that's my resources bank in Notion. I hope that was interesting and useful. And you can see like, again, that value that now anytime that I get resource in, 
it goes into that folder or into that page on Notion and I have an image there by which I can view a, a, sort of a snapshot or a thumbnail of each of the resources uh, and um, I find that that was a much much better way for me to organize my resources and be able to go and find them again whenever I needed to use those resources for a particular lesson or to teach in a particular class, a particular topic. I hope that's been super useful. You've been watching Notion for Teachers. I'm Andrew. Hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be sure not to miss any of my future videos which are dropping at least once a week. Thanks a lot for watching. Please reply to me in the comments if you've got any questions about what I've done there. It'd be great to open up dialogue uh, and be great to speak to you again soon. Thanks a lot for watching.